incredible encounters, witnessing animals and humans living together in heaven. Everyone, welcome. On April 3, 2008, an ordinary day turned into a nightmare for her. While doing her usual household tasks, she suddenly felt a sharp, unbearable pain in her abdomen. It was like something was digging deep inside her. The pain got worse, and she passed out. When she woke up, she was in a hospital bed, and her husband was right there by her side. The doctor gave her a serious diagnosis. Acute appendicitis. They explained that her appendix, a small organ at the end of her large intestine, had become infected or blocked, causing severe pain. If they didn't act quickly, her appendix could burst, leading to dangerous complications. The medical professional impressed upon her the necessity of undergoing surgery to address the appendicitis. Worries about the surgical perils seized her, but the doctor provided reassurance that this was a routine procedure characterized by minimal surgical hazards. After a meticulous contemplation of the options, she assented to the surgical endeavor. The surgery transpired later that afternoon, unfolding without notable complications. The surgeon effectuated a modest incision in her abdomen, subsequently extracting the troublesome appendix through an endoscope. Following the procedure, the doctor delivered the heartening news that all had proceeded smoothly with the complete removal of her appendix. Notwithstanding the surgery's success, her recuperation demanded an extended stay in the hospital to ensure her full recovery. Throughout this hospital sojourn, another disquieting revelation emerged, the presence of an infection in the surgical wound necessitating a second surgical intervention. Fluid extracted from the infected area underwent scrutiny, unveiling the presence of staph bacteria. She underwent her second surgery under anesthesia, though her capacity to hear persisted for an extended period. During her time under the anesthetic influence, she overheard discussions among the medical staff regarding her loved ones, her two-year-old daughter, her father, and her husband. Their discourse took on a disheartening tenor, expressing doubts about her chances of recovery and the possibility of reuniting with her family. The experience left her bewildered and incensed, believing such pessimistic deliberations to be unjustified while she still clung to life. This period bore complexity as staph bacteria had infiltrated a significant portion of her body and its complete eradication posed a formidable challenge. The root cause of her infection had remained undetermined as the medical tools employed had been sterilized. She awoke in the intensive care unit, her eyes widening to the sight of her concerned family huddled around her, their visages etched with profound sorrow. An oxygen tube had been inserted into her throat, rendering communication impossible. She yearned to reassure them, to convey that her condition was not as dire as it appeared, that she was feeling relatively well. When the doctor inquired about her condition, she responded with a victory gesture. The doctor exited the room to confer with her parents, and her ears inadvertently caught fragments of their conversation. Her mother was agitated, beseeching the doctor for answers about her condition and the appropriate course of action. Her husband inquired about the severity of her situation, to which the doctor's response affirmed the gravity of her condition, discussing the looming prospect of brain damage and outlining potential treatment alternatives. Owing to the unavailability of extra beds, her parents and husband were compelled to depart from the hospital. Her throat harbored an agonizing soreness, and she was keen to communicate this discomfort. Equipped with a pen and a sheet of paper, she composed her message, directing her plea to the attending nurse. And so, she conveyed the distress of her sore throat to the nurse tending to her. The nurse, responsible for her care, offered a comforting touch to her head, reassuring her that a degree of discomfort was normal but, regrettably, the tube could not be removed. Approximately two hours later, an event of profound significance unfolded. One nurse announced her intention to pick up her daughter from school, and soon after, the second nurse conveyed her plan to take a brief respite to hydrate herself. Not long after the nurses departed, she felt her breathing becoming increasingly labored as sputum began to accumulate. A blockage in the tube was impeding the flow of oxygen to her lungs. Despite her efforts, she found herself incapable of raising her voice, her body writhing in helplessness. The passage of mere seconds stretched into agonizing hours. Simultaneously, an alarm blared, and a swarm of doctors and nurses flooded into her room, their frantic cries for specialized assistance echoing like the ravings of madmen. 
She could perceive their frantic actions but could no longer draw breath. A physician injected a solution into the tube to clear the obstruction. In response, her respiration ceased and her heartbeat faltered. It was then that she experienced a departure from her corporeal form. When her eyes opened again, she found herself suspended in the air, garbed in a hospital gown. A profound serenity had replaced her pain, while below, her body lay surrounded by a team of doctors. Suddenly, she felt a mystical force pulling her upward, as if it wanted to take her away from this world. Anxious and torn, she resisted, fearing to leave her family and her body, unsure if she'd ever return. But the force was unstoppable, and she had to accept her departure. As she left her earthly life, she embarked on a remarkable journey. She saw a huge, radiant tree, and small, loving creatures played around it, their voices resonating deep within her. Her journey continued, and she left behind her physical and emotional burdens. She met colorful, otherworldly beings who welcomed her warmly. Moving forward, she encountered children with beautiful, unique skin tones, playing happily in fields and around a grand fountain in a garden. On her approach to the garden, she observed people of various ages, communicating through their thoughts and some engrossed in books. She sensed no discomfort or suffering in this place. Thoughts of her parents and husband momentarily troubled her, knowing they endured suffering. However, her anxiety faded, replaced by the belief that they would eventually join her in this realm. A little further, she encountered an exuberant group of elderly individuals strolling through a garden teeming with flowers beside a picturesque river. In the distance, a luminous glow caught her attention, and she pondered whether it signified her ultimate destination. As she drew nearer, the love emanating from the light intensified. She felt an irresistible pull towards the light, as if it were beckoning her to a final haven. Slowly, she approached, enveloped by its warmth and tranquility, as though becoming one with it. This light bestowed upon her a sensation of love and peace of unparalleled purity. Her soul felt liberated and elated, filling her with gratitude for the enigmatic force that had guided her to this extraordinary experience. A gentle touch graced her head, and she was overwhelmed by an intense love. A soothing voice assured her to remain calm, despite her myriad questions. In that moment, her journey homeward began, and she couldn't help but wonder if she was returning too abruptly, given the exquisite nature of the experience. She found herself confined to a hospital bed, where a team of doctors feverishly toiled to revive her. The enigmatic force, suffused with love and tranquility, lingered in the backdrop. Her reluctance to return to her physical form persisted, and then, a voice emerged with greater clarity and resolve. It admonished her, asserting that her earthly mission remained incomplete and the lives of many hinged upon her. She grasped that departing this world wasn't an option, her purpose remained unfulfilled. A mysterious force brought her back to her body, causing intense pain when she awoke, surrounded by doctors. Despite her pleas not to return, her heart had stopped and a determined doctor revived her. She initially felt resentment but gradually regained her senses, when she shared her near-death experience, the doctor mentioned similar stories and wondered if it related to her beliefs, to which she said she had none. After her experience, she started thinking about faith to make sense of it all. When she got back home, she felt a mix of emotions. She was thankful to be with her family, but found it hard to explain what she'd gone through. When she shared it with her husband, he was doubtful, thinking it might be a surgical hallucination. However, she remained steadfast in her belief that it was real, not a hallucination or chemical trick. She was certain that this experience would shape her life for years to come. The gratitude for a second chance at life fueled her desire to make a meaningful impact, and she was determined to live a significant life.